Now let's look at equations with pronumerals on the denominator. So we're used to um, fractions with pronumerals only on the top, right? Where the number is on the bottom is always a constant. Now we'll have a look at fractions where the pronumerals are on the denominator. But it's actually really easy. It's actually the same kind of process. So don't be worried. Starting with 38. Okay, now guys, Again, all you need to do if the first thing is to identify the denominator. So what's the denominator here? It's x. So just multiply everything by x. So multiply 12x by x, 12 over x by x, and 3 by x. Because now we know that we can cancel this out, can't we? So we just have 12 left on this side and 3x left on this side. And then 3 times x is 12, so what's x? x is just 4, because 12 divided by 3 is 4. And that's it guys, that's all we need to do. So it's the same kind of procedure, yeah? 39, okay, we've got more than one fraction. Now this is where I want you to think about the lowest common multiple. So, the denominators are 3x, 2, and 6. Now don't worry about the x for a moment, guys. Worry about 3, 2, and 6. What's the lowest common multiple of 3, 2, and 6? It's 6, isn't it? Good. So 6 is the lowest common multiple, but we have an extra x. So that x, we have to multiply it to the lowest common multiple. And that's what we're going to be multiplying to all the terms. So I'm going to multiply 2 over 3x by 6x, half by 6x, and 1 over 6 by 6x. So you get the idea? So whatever pronumeral there is, stick it to the lowest common multiple. And then you can see that here, the x's will cancel out, and 6 divided by 3, that will be 2, that will be 1. And here you can see that 2 and 6, that will be 1 and that will be 3. Here, the 6's will cancel out, yeah? So we won't have any more denominators. So here we just have 2 times 2, which is 4, 3 times 1, sorry, 3x times 1, which is 3x, and x times 1, which is x. Now gather your like terms. So 3x minus x, so move this x over to this side to make it minus x. So 3x minus x is 2x, and that will be minus 4. Move it over to the other side. And divide by 2, x is negative 2. Okay, that's the answer. So the last steps is pretty easy, but just remember, after you found your lowest common multiple, multiply by the extra pronumeral that you have. So that's 39. 40, okay, so we have 2x, 4, and x. And remember, this is just 1x, isn't it? So the numbers are 2, 4, and 1. What's the lowest common multiple of 2, 4, and 1? It's just going to be 4, isn't it? But what are the extra pronumerals that we have? We have x. And we also have x here, but if they are the same, you just need to multiply one of them. Okay, so you don't have to multiply by x times x. You just need, to, you need 1x. Okay, so I'm going to multiply everything by 4x. So here, the x will cancel out, and 4 divided by 2. That becomes a 1, that becomes a 2. And here, the 4 and the 4 just completely cancels out, and here, the x's completely cancel out. And you can see here, we have 2 times 5 left, which is 10, x times 3, which is 3x, and 4 times negative 2, which is negative 8. So, the rest is really simple. Move the 10 over to the other side, so it's negative 8 minus 10, which is negative 18. And then divide by 3, you get negative 6. That's the answer. Okay, so again, lowest common multiply, lowest common multiple multiplied by the extra pronumeral x. Okay, so that's 40. 41. Okay, this time we have 1 minus x, 1 plus x. It's a bit different, isn't it? The numbers in front is 1 and 1, so it's 1 times 1 minus x, 1 times 1 plus x. So we can't actually find any lowest common multiples because the numbers are only 1. So, actually I think that will confuse you a little bit more, so I'll get rid of that. So the denominators are 1 minus x and 1 plus x. Remember guys, once you've found the lowest common multiple, you have to also multiply by the extra pronumerals that we have. But here, we have 1 minus x and 1 plus x. 
there's no lowest common multiple that we have to look for. So we simply multiply 1 minus x by 1 plus x. So see how these two are different? These two are completely different. This is 1 minus x and this is 1 plus x. They're completely two di uh, different terms, isn't it? So if they're completely different, you're going to multiply it together and that will be basically your lowest common multiple. Okay, so that's pretty much what you have to multiply to all the fractions here, so all, all the terms. So you multiply this by 1 minus x, 1 plus x. Um, 2 over 1 plus x times 1 minus x times 1 plus x. And 0 times anything is just 0, so you don't have to multiply it here. Okay, so this is the trickier question, but hopefully you got the idea. So see how 1 minus x and 1 minus x, they totally cancel out? And here, 1 plus x and 1 plus x, they cancel out. Okay, so we just have 3 times 1 plus x here. We have 2 times 1 minus x here. And remember to put the negative and the rest is just 0. Now, we got rid of the fraction. So you just multiply everything by, sorry, expand out everything. So we have 3 plus 3x minus 2. And minus minus is a plus, so plus 2x equals to 0. Gather your like terms, so 3x plus 2x is 5x. Now just simplify this all in one go, 3 minus 2 is 1. So move the 1 over to the other side, making it negative 1, and divide by 5, so I have negative 1 over 5 as x. Okay, are you still confused or what? Are you guys understanding what I just said? For those who are confused, let me just show you one more little technique. If you didn't really understand the idea of multiplying these two together, if you don't really understand why, let's think of it this way. Have a look at this fraction. The denominator is 1 minus x. Now to get rid of the 1 minus x, to eliminate that denominator, what should we do? What should we have to multiply? 1 minus x, isn't it? So if I multiply this by 1 minus x, I can cancel those out, right? But I can't multiply every, I can't multiply just this by 1 minus x. I'm going to multiply everything by 1 minus x. So I'm going to multiply this by 1 minus x as well. And this side, I'm not really going to bother doing that because it's just 0. Now, I've done that one. Now look at this fraction here, 2 over 1 plus x. What's the denominator? It's 1 plus x. So in order to eliminate 1 plus x, I need to multiply the fraction by 1 plus x. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to multiply this by 1 plus x, because that means I can cancel those out, right? But remember, you've got to do it to everything in the equation. So I'm going to multiply this side by 1 plus x as well. And 0, I don't have to bother. So see how, guys, eventually I'm just multiplying by 1 minus x, 1 plus x, which is what we did here. Yeah, so that's why eventually we're multiplying by both of them together. Okay, so if you need to, you can go like step by step as what I did here, but just remember it, guys, it's multiplying by both of them, okay, in order to eliminate everything. So hopefully that makes sense. So that's question 41, 42, okay, now we have an x, we have another x and we have x plus 4. Now remember guys what I said, if it's the same, you don't have to multiply it again. So we have x and we have an x plus 4 and I know we have another x but because we already have x, we don't have to multiply by x again, so we don't have to have x squared. So we have x times x plus 4. That's what I'm going to multiply to everything, all right? So x times x plus 4. So here I can cancel the x's. Here I can cancel the x's as well. And here I can cancel the x plus 4's. Okay, so I really like it when I can cancel it all out. So we just have 6 times x plus 4 left here. 3 times x plus 4. Make sure you keep the negative. And here we just have x and 2, so 2x, two okay? So now it's a lot more simple. Expand it out. You guys should be really good at this now. That one is 6x plus 24. 
negative 3x, negative plus makes negative, so negative 12 equals to 2x. Gather your like terms. So 3x, because 6x minus 3x is 3x, I'm just going to simplify the left hand side first. So 6x minus 3x is 3x, 24 minus 12 is 12. Now let's gather the like terms. So move your 2x over to this side and move the 12 over to the other side by switching the signs. So 3x minus 2x is x, x is negative 12. That's the answer. Okay, so hopefully you understand the pattern. We'll do a couple of more so you get a little bit more used to this. 43, okay guys. Now I want you to think about this one. Remember when we try to, uh, okay, first of all, I'm going to identify the denominators. These are the denominators. Now you should be able to tell me that this one is a single fraction like this. I made it into a single fraction, okay, because for those who don't know why, see the denominator is x minus 2x plus 2. Remember when we make it into a single fraction, we multiply the two denominators together on the denominator and then we cross multiply. So we do 2 times x plus 2 minus 3 times x minus 2. That's how we make it into a single fraction, don't we? And then this side, remember our factorization of 2 squares, difference of 2 squares. Remember, a squared minus b squared is a plus b, a minus b. For those who haven't learnt this yet, trying to familiarise yourself with this now. If you have two squares, if you have a difference of two squares, you can do a plus b, a minus b by factorising. Okay? So if you want to factorise, that's what you do. So see how here, x squared minus 4 is x squared minus 2 squared. So x is a and 2 is b in this case. So that's why I made it x minus 2, x plus 2 on the denominator here. Okay? Do you get the idea? So I'll rub this all out now so it's a lot more clearer. Now look at the denominators. Is this denominator the same as this denominator? Yes, it is. So I'm going to multiply both sides by itself to simplify it into something like this. So for those who are not sure what I did, I just multiplied everything by the denominator. X minus, I'll just put it under here. Yeah? So this and this will cancel. This and this will cancel. So we just have 2 times x plus 2 minus 3 times x minus 2 equal to 7. Okay, so that's how I eliminate that denominator. Now, just expand it. So, expansion, 3 times x is 3x, negative negative is plus, so plus 6 equal to 7. And then, gather your like terms, so move the 4 and 6 over to the right hand side. So we just have 2x minus 3x on my left, which is negative x. And 7 minus 4 minus 6 is negative 3. Now if it's negative on both sides, you can just cancel it out. So x is just 3. Okay, so this was a little bit more confusing one. I understand some of you may not be really used to this one. So if that's one of you, don't be too worried. But that's the kind of idea. Okay. And that's pretty much it. Or, before we continue, I'll show you one more little method. If you don't like making it into single fractions and all, you can actually change this to 7 over. Remember how the denominator was x plus 2, x minus 2? So now see, the denominators we have is x minus 2, x plus 2, and x plus 2, x minus 2. So, see how this one is x plus 2, x minus 2? And remember what I said, guys, if it's already there, you don't have to multiply it again. So, see how x plus 2 is already here? So, you don't have to multiply by x plus 2 again. And see how x minus 2 is already here? So, you don't have to multiply it again. This is what you multiply 
to all these fractions and you can try the same way as what we did in the previous few questions and you'll still get the same answer. Okay, but make it into, into a single fraction is one method. Okay, it's probably a little bit more quicker, that's why we chose this one. Okay, so trying to ha um, give yourself options. That was 43 and 44. Okay, we've got two fractions again. This one, what's the denominators? X minus 1, X plus 2. Okay, so x minus 2. And they're both different, aren't they? So to get the lowest common multiple or the common one is simply x minus 1, x minus 2. We just multiply it together and multiply it to both sides. So what I did here was, actually, I'll just show you how to do this first and then show you the answer. I'm going to multiply both sides by this x minus 1, x minus 2. And this side by x minus 1, x, x minus 2. Okay, so I'm multiplying. So see here, we can cancel the x minus 2's, and here we can cancel the x minus 1's. So we just have x minus 2 and x plus 5 left on my left, and x plus 3 and x minus 1 left on your right. Okay, so that's, I'm simplifying it like this. So you can see that x minus 2 times x plus 5, x plus 3 times x minus 1. That's how I got that. Now let's expand it. But this part, you have to be very, very careful with your expansion. Because we have to do x times x times x times minus 2 times 5 times x times 5 times minus 2. Remember that stuff? So it's going to look like this. x times x is x squared. x times minus 2 is minus 2x. 5 times x is 5x. 5 times negative 2 is negative 10. Now here, x times x is x squared. x times negative 1 is negative x. 3 times x is 3x. And 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. Ah, OK. So you can see we can simplify it out. So negative 2x plus 5x is 3x, negative x plus 3x is 2x. So just simplify it if you can. Now, you can see that I put all the x's on my left and all the constants on my right. And you can see the x squares actually just cancel out because x squared minus x squared is 0. So you can get rid of the x squares, which is excellent. Now 3x minus 2x is x, minus 3 plus 10 is 7. So x is 7. Okay, and that's the answer. So I know this part, the first part might, might have been a little bit confusing, but just multiplying everything by the same term and trying to cancel out whatever's common. Okay, and be careful with this kind of expansion as well. So that concludes this part.